last time on Fur Fighters. We're battling an alien, some sort of mutant alien type thing. Oh yeah, interactive space battle, what the heck? A copyright, <laughs> a copyright lawyer. 31st century films, what, really? Seven copyrights, okay, all right. Hey, don't, don't let that thing run loose on our station. You're gonna cause immense problems here. It's amazing to think how much these cost, really, when you actually think about it. Hello everyone! Welcome back to the Fur Fighters playthrough from the CC Network. I'm Fred, your ever-reliable host as always, and last time round we went through that door and into that rocket to go through Space Station Mir. It was an anticlimactic, yet slightly intense showing. This time, we enter through these double doors. And as you can see, there is a shuttle there. There is also a Juliet teleport, and that should indicate saving Claude. Juliet has to venture where no cat has ever gone to save her husband. This, ladies and gentlemen, could get quite ugly indeed. As we blast off somewhere in space to rescue Juliet's husband. Now, the reason why you didn't know about where the boss door was, there was no General Bristol to tell us what to do at the beginning of the level, there was no cutscene like there was in others because it was cut out due to file issues. But as you can see, look at that. We're in a space suit. Our teleport is down there in spite of the fact no one else can climb up to that. But here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We're depressurizing. And here is the deep blue void that is space. Oh my god. Juliet, what are you doing? G get away from him, he's a giant space monster. Ah, okay. Juliet, at least you know that. You can smell your own husband through space. That's impressive. Impressive, mademoiselle. Uh, I'll say this. This is quite awkward. Uh, <laughs> why must it always be me who talks when we fight? Oh, Juliet. Come on. He's been genetically modified. You know this. Bristol knows it. Uh, oh, God. Just... You're a bit obtuse, cat. There we go. Best thing to do is just to blast him and stop him from attacking us. Now, that is what we have to do. And as you can tell, this space, the space module here falls apart pretty quickly. See, now Claude has a bigger version of our plasma beamer, if you hadn't noticed there. That thing was freaking massive. And I will tell you all right now, I am slightly worrying because, of course, if you fall in this level, my god, you fall into the vacuum of space, you're not recovering from that. And look at him. There he is, dropping electro-radiation onto the platform. I will tell you this, guys, right now. This is my favourite boss in all of Fur Fighters because it's challenging. But also, when you shoot... Ah! When you shoot... It takes a lot of cat-like reflexes to escape from it. But the one thing I love about it is that it, oh, it, it has atmosphere. You're in space and it just feels claustrophobic. Trying to shoot down... Trying to shoot down your husband it is quite intense stuff. And the fact is, the noise that Claude makes when you shoot him... It still rings on my brain to this day. I hear that noise and it just, it scares me. It really does. And he's gonna keep going. He's gonna keep doing this for a while until he feels we have been elegant enough to dodge everything. Claude is not the smartest guy because this, look at this. Did you hear the growling? 
Did you hear the snarling noises of that cat in agony? Did you see what damage he did to us by blasting us with that plasma cannon? That can kill you if you don't keep... If you think you can outrun that gun, you are mistaken. Just like most of the boss fights we've already shown so far in this game, it is best to be a guy who runs around in circles. Because you are more likely to not get killed. It, if you stand in the same place and shoot, you get a concentrated flow of plasma energy directly into the cat's body. If you move, you have bad problems. You're going to have a bad time. And in the case of this, I have to spend most of my time trying to keep all the ammo in one piece or trying to dodge these electric shockwaves. It's not fun. And if you don't keep your eye on where you are and how your gravity, how your jump distance is affected by the gravity, you're going to run into problems, as I am currently doing, by testifying that. Come on, Claude. We hit him to get him down. Go on. There we have it. He's now dead. But of course, he's not dead. He's flown away and this is about to blow up. Oh, Jesus. We've got Super Pet Yum to heal us back to health. And there we go. I didn't want to show you the destruction of that. It'd be too painful. Oh, I love this boss. For the, If I was going to make a list of my favorite boss fights in all the video games, which is rare because I haven't played that many games, which is sad. This would be in there for contention. Because it's just, again, the atmosphere. You're in space fighting a space cat. It's... Oh, it's... It's all, It's just the most enjoyable boss fight. Because I'm not on the edge of my seat. Trying to not... Pro, not highlight that I am very nervous. I'm not nervous. In fact, out of all the boss fights we've had thus far, this is actually the least nerve-wracked I've been. Because I, I feel like I'm enjoying this one. And as you can see, we've shot him, brought him down, and BANG! I'm sure Juliet feels horrible for what she has to do. But then again, Claude is the one who is genetically modified. He's the one out there. And inevitably, I have to say, to have Juliet's battle be so full of intensity, I am... Hey, come on. Hey, Mr. Catman, you gonna, you gonna live here? Nope, he's not coming down. I've been wasting my health for that. Thank God there's a lot of pet yums here to not showcase it. Where is he? Come on, you bastard. I need you to get down here. There we go, we got him. He's coming down. Die! That sound. I feel sorry for Juliet because she actually tried to be human with with her husband to try and see reason behind all of the madness. She probably knew. She probably knew that Claude was genetically modified and that this would be a problem. But she wanted to try and reason with him. That takes balls. Rico, what did he do? He just said, hey, have you put on some weight? And like, that was that was horrible. And it's just, oh, I can understand why some of you would find this stressful. I'm just, I feel sad. Because not only is this boss easy-ish, I feel like, as I've done it so often, I know that my, my, abil my, re my ability to die is lessened considerably compared to the rest of the bosses because I know what I have to do but in doing that I also enjoy it more than every other boss in the game as a result because I'm not on the edge of my seat trying to worry about my death I know I can do this come on come on Claude there we go got him come on you cat bastard there we go some pet yums for us we need it as there is the final section up there. As that last platform we've just been on gets consigned to history. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We can't go back now. Because we are about to enter the final part of this boss fight. We're on top of this space module. Which does go higher, but as you can see, we cannot reach those areas on this satellite. It's time. Time to take Claude down. With one final set of blows. And it... I have to admit. 
This may seem anticlimactic, and I can understand this entire last few levels since the VAB sapped my energy dry. This level, this Cape Canado has been out to kill me at almost every level it's been at. I've died at least once in every section of it. It is a dangerous place, and that should be a metaphor. Space is dangerous. And if this level, if this game hasn't made that alert to you already, then you are stupid. As we pump more hot plasma into Juliet's husband. And that is not a euphemism. Don't ruin the moment, you prick. Nonetheless, I'm starting to feel the nerves now. Because any wrong step now will be a waste of my time. I don't want to have to continue to getting shocked there. But I did not want to lose. Come on, Claude. We know you're under there. Just let me shoot you down one last time. Come on. Your wife knows what's best for you. God, that voice. Him snarling in pain. I, I hope, I hope to God that if we shoot him with this enough, he's not going to vaporize into thin air. Could you imagine how horrible that would be? If we did all this, and then Claude dies. Could you imagine that? I couldn't. And it's slightly terrifying to think. Come on, Claude. We know we've got you. You can't survive much longer. Come on. Come on! He tried to take a shot at us. Make note of that. God damn. We had him, but he took a shot at us and nearly caused our death because that plasma gun took away a lot of their health. Thankfully, there's enough pet yum. At least the boss is slightly forgiving. But again, in trying to reach all that stuff, you could get it wrong, you could die, and you could ruin this entire boss for yourself. Come on, Claude. Fight me one last time. Nope, we have one more to go. I thought that was the end. But Claude's spacesuit must be made of some kind of really incredible material designed by the guys at Cape Canado. They must have been. Because there's no way it could survive this much plasma being pumped into it, right? I'm telling you that now. I don't know engineering too well, but I know that's not the case. Come on. One last shot. There we go. Claude is down. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's the same Claude from the museum? Can you get me out of the spacesuit? The colour is appalling. It's a spacesuit, you idiot! Get out of your artsy-fartsy critical mind. As the sun sets on what was a very enjoyable boss fight for me. As I have to get my breath back before coughing again. <coughs> oh, God. Nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen... That was stressful, but peaceful. Uh, excuse me. Bristol. There's a bear down there. I'm trying to kill it for you so you don't have any problems. Well, ladies and gentlemen. That was a testing fight. But one that I most certainly enjoyed. Claude from the gallery, from the museum, was Juliet's husband. I should have put two and two together already. I foresaw that you would not fail. Of course, because you're a spiritual medium now, Mr. Bristol. And we, oui, mon general. Yes, it was so very far to fall. Yeah, because you fall into nothingness, Miss Juliet. Or Mrs. Juliet, I should say. Anyway, Claude will be well soon. And Juliet, we have to head back to Furfighter Village for the next part of our quest. Yes, we do. And by the way, yeah. I had to give up my London Saturday job as a lion tamer. Wow. Bristol, what did you not do? And we can now use a bullwhip. Okay. I'm not entirely sure what we're going to use it for, but... Okay. It's fine by me. Ladies and gentlemen, that... Is the end of... Cape Canano. Fuck, stop interrupting my monologue, you prick. 
Cape Canado and all of its spacey glory is done. I hope you've all enjoyed the insanity over the last three episodes, or four, including this one, in seeing me get out of it. Because Cape Canado, like I said, is where the difficulty in this game really starts to spike against you, and I hope I've proven it in the last few episodes. I really hope I have done that justice, because it's... It's a level that is probably one of my favourites just in terms of the environment, but what tests it sets you? It's baffling, it's infuriating. And in a way, I'm happy that I'm now going to leave it behind. <laughs> and kill a few bears on my way out as well. For good measure, indeed. And I've got to say, ladies and gentlemen, where we have to go next is a little bit of a mystery because, as you can see, we're going to catch that bus back out from the site to Furfighter Village and we'll be fine. The question is, where do we go in giving that bullwhip to somebody? Well, like all logic will dictate, we have to follow the signs. And as you can see, Cape Canado is just here. All's well and good. I do want to show you Juliet's home first, before I end this episode. Hey, it's a kitten! Aww. Cute little things, and they're giant bulbous heads that still make me wonder how the hell you gave birth to so many of them. Uh, as you can see, there's a TV with a mini game. There's Claude in bed. Yep. Yep, you're still tired, and look at that. Look at all those kittens! Look at all those kittens! Crazy. Crazy indeed. There's a... Oh, day a, a Claude, go back to sleep. Go back to sleep. And I want to point this out too, because it's very fun. Walk-in wardrobe, everybody, with gold tokens inside it. How brilliant is that? I, I seriously point that out. How brilliant is that? Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, <laughs> I love it. A walk-in wardrobe with gold tokens inside. Beautiful. Now, back out we go. It's a lovely little small house with its design being very unique for the artistically minded of our fur fighters. Right. We've done that. But I want you guys to understand what we have to do next. Because what we do next is a little bit interesting. Because there is the city of fear. Anatat Tananatat, a place where I have very bad feelings about because I know how terrible it is. We can give the bullwhip to him. You need a bullwhip and fedora before you can explore the city. I'm trying to give you a bullwhip, sir. That's what I've got. But please note what he said. And fedora. Bristol. Return to Gold Machine Valley and investigate the giant drill. Okay. I was actually going to end the episode here, but you just sent me on another mission. Ladies and gentlemen, knowing that Mr. Bristol has sent us on another mission, this episode ain't over just yet. We're going to enter Beaver Power... And we are going to find out what the hell he meant by that. Because I want to ensure that no time is wasted. And hopefully we will find what we need to find out. And all will hopefully be good. <coughs> God, sorry. God, I thought I was going to sneeze there. I coughed instead. The problems of being ill. Oh, come on, Bristol. You already know we've done this already. See, this is why they remove this from later levels, because they know how much of an irritant, irritant it is. Speaking of irritants, hello, bears I thought I killed ages ago. This shows you that, yeah, bears respawn. They are bastards. We know the drill already. But we have a more powerful gun that they can't escape from. Oh, yeah. And we can pick up some bomb ammo, because we haven't got a lot of it. <laughs> Dear genocide, because reasons. Now, we're going to enter God Machine Valley after we kill all these bears with one shot of a shotgun, because we're that much of a badass. And we're going to find out what the blue hell Bristol was on about. 
Because remember, I mentioned upon the God of Drilling, I didn't want to come back there following our initial trepidatious efforts with Juliet before. The thing is, though, there is something. There is something there. And we are going to find it out. We're going to find it out. Sorry. Why that sounded Australian and then had no vocalization, I have no clue. But this is what happens. Nonetheless. Anyway, in the meantime, let's go on. We're back in God Machine Valley. Wait, what does Bristol say here? The value can lead you to a giant surprise if you keep your eyes open. Okay, you're bigging this surprise up and it's slightly irritating me somewhat. Look at that! And as you can see, all ten babies are in our grasp and the drill is slowing down. Look at that. Is it going to stop? Oh shit, it's not. Oh god. Oh god. Hello, bear. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, I thought it was going to slow down, but just like last time, we're going to need to get across this. Hey, this is, the, this is the thing. I told you guys we would be doing backtracking, didn't I? Well, look at what we're doing. Backtracking. It's beautiful, is it not? Oh, boy. Anyway, those crocodiles are going to come after us, but we don't have to worry about them. We're not worrying. We're going to go through God Machine Valley, go to the God of Drilling, and enjoy just, well, I say enjoy, but at least just figure out what the hell we're doing, because, uh... Bear Disguise? Never seemed more appropriate to pick this up and use it. Thing is, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the Cape Canado portion of this, this journey. And I hope you're ready for what we're about to discover. Because, again, we can't enter the City of Fear. We have a bullwhip, but not a fedora. And we've been told to come back here. So what could it possibly be? Where could we possibly go? Well, that is what I'm here to show you. At least, hopefully, to show you anyway. Hello, bear. Goodbye, bear, who I just had nearly had a hiccup in trying to stop. Uh, hey. Hello, sir. Ha <laughs> ha, you can't survive. As you can see up there, the hole we ventured into, we know that hole over there is sent and death. This hole. Sorry, I, didn't, I was going to do a monologue there, but bears. Go on, bears, just die already. There's no point. There's no point in surviving when you're up against the bombs and the firepower. Also, what are the points this out earlier? Hadn't Bungalow's music has waltzing Matilda in Bungalow in uh, Beaver Power? You guys didn't notice that. As you can see. There is a Chang teleport, the one we went back to get earlier, which I didn't show you, was that. Look under there, ladies and gentlemen. That is a small enough gap for a Firefox to fit through. And that leads me to where this episode ends, because that, that up there, ladies and gentlemen, in this hole, is where we are going to go next time. We're going to find out where we have to go. And I'm going to leave you on a small cliffhanger. You can guess what it is. You can pine for the fjords trying to figure it out. But you're going to have to wait until next time to see where that little hole leads us. Like, oh, I know, I know, Chang. We're going to see where he is so desperate to take us. I have been Freddy Thomas. You've been people watching. This has been the Fur Fighters playthrough on the Dreamcast for the CC Network. And with Cape Canardo now behind us... Next time, we are going to see where our adventure takes us.